Hello and welcome back to another video. Today we have part 3 of the video series R Tutorial for Beginners and today's topic will be vectors. Let's get started. So when I talk about vectors in the context of R, I'm not referring to the vectors you know probably from geometry, but I'm rather talking about something that's called an atomic vector. So an atomic vector is the simplest data structure R has to offer and it's nothing more than an accumulation of elements of the same type. So you might ask yourself, what is a type? Well, every object in R is associated to a certain type. So a text, for example, which is also called a string, is associated to the type character. To check the type of an object, you type in type of, and then the element. Another very important type is the type double. This is when you type in a real number. Here, two-thirds, for example. There are a lot of types in R. For example, you can also do true, which is to test the type logical. But the most important in R are character and double. So an atomic vector is nothing more than an accumulation of objects of the same type. And the way you do it in R is you type a lowercase c, and then you separate those elements with a comma. So for example, 1, 2, 3. Or you can create a vector which has all the gender names in it. So for example, male, female, and now since it's 2020 we also have to include diverse. Now if you mix those two types in one vector, for example, you have a string and a number, you will see that R coerces this three to a character. Because by definition, the types of the elements in a vector have to be the same. So now if you type in type of, and then you have here string and three, you will see that the type is a character. This is also the main difference between an atomic vector and a list in R. When talking about a list, the elements do not have to have the same type. I will probably do a video about lists at a later point. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in that. Now that we have established what a vector is, I can show you some cool tricks on how to create and work with them. The first thing is when you want to create a vector with consecutive numbers, you can just type in the first number you want, a colon, and then the last number you want. So for example, if I want to have a vector which includes all the numbers from 1 to 20, I type in 1, colon, 20, and it will return the vector I want. A very important function when working with vectors is the length function. So for example, if I have a vector called x in the following, and it has just 1, 2, 3, then the length function will give me the number of elements that x has. A very useful function when creating vectors in R is the seq function, which stands for sequence. The first argument of this function is the number you want your vector to start with, so for example 1. And the second one is the number you want your vector to end with, so for example 5. And then you can include an argument called by, which specifies the difference between the elements. So for example, if I do 0.5 here, then the difference between all the elements is 0.5, so 1, 1 1.5, and so on. I can do the same thing, and instead of by, I can do length out, which specifies the length of the given vector then. So for example, if I type in 10, r returns me a vector of length 10 with equal increments between 1 and 5. Another very useful function when creating vectors in r is the rep function. If you want to have, for example, a vector of length 10, which only contains ones, then you can do rep 1, comma, and then times equals to 10. You can even do this with a larger pattern. For example, if you have the vector with 0 and 1, and do then times equals to 10, then it will return 0, 1, 10 times in consecutive order. If we first want to have 0 10 times and then 1 10 times, we do each instead of times. For more information about these functions, you may read their documentation by typing question mark rep or question mark seq. 
Now that you know how to create vectors, I will show you some cool tools on how to work with them. For example, you have the vector y with numbers from 1 to 10. And if you want to return the first element of y, you type in y and then in squared brackets a 1. If you type in a negative sign before the 1, it will return every element but the first element. Now if you want to return, for example, the second and sixth element of y at the same time, you type in a vector in those squared brackets. If you have now two vectors of the same length, you can add those two. This works exactly like a vector addition you may know from geometry. So let's create the vector z, which has all the integers between 11 and 20. I recall y was the integers from 1 to 10, z from 11 to 20, and now I can do y plus z. And this returns a vector of the same length as y and z, where the first element is the sum of the first element of y, so 1, plus the first element of z, so 11. So 1 plus 11 is 12, and the other elements work accordingly, so 2 plus 12 is 14, and so on and so forth. If you switch the plus sign with the multiplication sign, so you do y times z, then this will also return a vector that has the same length as y and z. And here the first element is the product of the first element of y and the first element of z. So 1 times 11 is of course 11, 2 times 12 is 24, 3 times 13 is 39, and so on and so forth. You get the idea. If you want to return the scalar product of y and z, you have to do y and then percent times percent and z. This is also equal to the matrix multiplication, which I will discuss probably in a later video. Two more very useful functions are the sum function and the prod function. So if you remember the vector y, then sum of y returns the sum of all the elements present in the vector. So this means 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 and so on, and this is equal then to 55. Similarly, prod of y returns the product of all the elements present in the vector. So 1 times 2 times 3 times 4, so in the case of y it's just 10 factorial. Yeah, this sums up this video. Uh, I want to stress to conclude that uh, if you want to program with R, that it is essential to know all the tools uh, and functions I've shown you here today. If you have any feedback or recommendations for future videos, I would very much appreciate it if you leave them in the comments. Other than that, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. See you soon and take care. If you like this content, please leave a like and subscribe to this channel for more videos in the future. If you would like to support this channel financially, there is a donation link in the description.